All right, now here's what I'm really, really excited for too. So what's up everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today, uh, if you guys watched the last video, you know that we just bought another farm, or my dad bought another farm and we're gonna be using it, we're gonna be uh, doing everything that we're doing right across the street, that's, uh, yeah, that's our original farm there. He just bought it right across the highway. So we're gonna give, a, give you a full tour. We're gonna, we have some drone footage that we'll probably throw on on the end so you guys can see the whole lay of the land and everything. And we'll tell you what uh, we're gonna be doing on this place because we have some big plans. All right, here we go. First up, we have this little paddock here. It's about an acre. And we come to our first barn here. And attached to the barn, we have a, a little bit of a loading chute. Not as nice as the ones across the way, but it'll definitely work. Now, will it work for the Longhorns? Um, look at this. Probably not. But when we start loading them and everything, I will figure out something here with the makeshift gates or something. It it, it shouldn't be a big deal. But let's take a look. Uh, let's take a look at this first barn. Let's see. Here we go. A little bit short, but it works in here. And these buildings are actually pretty well built. Not going anywhere for sure. And this is like a little corral system that has four or five corrals inside this barn. And uh, I think this used to be the chicken coop because it's got chicken wire all over it and it's a, has its own door. Got some leftover firewood and, you know, just some remnants of stuff. But here's what I'm thinking. Here's what I'm thinking for in here. Now this is down the road. This isn't like a right away thing. Um, don't know when, but just everything I'm talking about is for the future. We have, we're still working in the house. We've, we got a lot, we got a lot of work to do in there. But in here, this would be the perfect place for some mama pigs if we want to do some uh, our own farrowing if we get into pork and i think we are going to get into some pork now what we could do is uh when the mama is about to have the baby we put we're going to put a big deep layer of wood chips in here that way you know she can be by herself she's not gonna um you know another pig's not gonna step on the piglets or something like that because that's definitely an issue so we could technically go have one two three Four, probably move that over so I'm giving more room for mama pigs in here at any given time which uh, that's a that's a lot of pigs do we're we gonna go that serious that fast probably not but uh, that's what you know it's here for and in here we could even do like another corral right there so we could actually do five and then have their you know their feed do uh let's do some sort of water system in here and just make it really nice just obviously we have to do some cleanup but that's not a big deal at all. But looking here, this would be looking like it'd be pretty perfect. It's already got electricity too, so if we need to put a heat lamp, this could work really well. Now would we grow out the pigs in here for the entire life? No, 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 this would just be until, you know, they're big enough and strong enough and to be able to get outside um, to where, you know, we feel comfortable. Uh, I don't know much about, you know, pigs. That's something that I do need to do some research on, but I've seen a few people on YouTube use this kind of method and uh, then get them out on pasture. And I think that might be the way that we have to go. The reason being is what I've been told is that because we have such a wild, uh, wild pig, wild hog problem around here is that if you have a female pig that is in heat, one of the wild ones is going to get her and they're going to, you know, do we really want the wild pigs? We'll see. I have a friend that is doing some experiment with that and just not on purpose by accident. And that's who I got that info from. So we're going to see how those turn out. They might be super hybrid vigor. They could be the great pigs, but you know what? That's a, uh, that's an experiment that uh, we'll see what happens with. But if we want to do like a specific breed, um, then we'd have to keep the mamas in here when they're in heat. That way wild ones don't get them. Let's go check the, let's go check the rest out. And over here, we got our second, we don't want to call it a barn. Don't know what you call it. It's like uh, stalls. And this here is again, really cool because we can do a lot with this. We can keep equipment in here to keep it out of the rain. We can keep, uh, you know, an animal in here. If like a cow, like if a cow is going to give birth in the winter time, then maybe, you know, and it's really, really cold. Maybe we can give them a little bit of uh, comfort and move, uh, move her over here. Also another thought, is that we could put hay bales in here and do like we're doing on the other side but actually have it covered create a deep bedding system here and uh cows can come in here and eat their hay bales get out of the rain have the bedding you know tick up 
And then when the cows are out of here back on pasture, we can put up some hog panels along this wall here and uh, move the piglets that are over there into here and they do some rooting up and they do some compost making for us. So uh, again, pretty cool. A lot of, lot of, just a lot of potential. I'm really, I don't know what we're gonna do yet. Don't have a set plan, you know. Don't, we're, we're, we're playing checkers right now, not chess. We're thinking, you know, what's the next move from here? Because there's just so much potential and I don't wanna make too many moves ahead and then it not work out. You know, when you first get a farm, the biggest thing that I learned from our first farm across the street is that don't make anything super permanent. Why? Because you're probably gonna wanna change it. You're probably gonna wanna change it. So here, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna take what's here and then we're gonna use it to the best of our ability and if we have to make a switch, great anything that we do is going to be very temporary for at least the first year at least the first year probably probably first year and a half two years and then once we got it down once we got stuff figured out that's when we'll start making stuff permanent but don't be you know going and investing in a ton of fence or going and putting in permanent paddocks right away because you know what you're probably going to want to change it but speaking of fence let's go uh, check out the, the new fence that we had built so this is coming out into the pasture and uh, we're gonna go over here real quick because um, part of the the deal that we worked out with the the sellers of the place is that uh, the property line actually used to go well not the property line the fence line used to go right there and all the way back and actually it cut um, this was on what would be considered the neighbor's property or neighbor side and back there was on our side but it was actually his so we got the fence lines all squared away I uh, have to do some, you know, we'll put in some gates and whatnot. My uh, my buddy's cows are still roaming over here because we don't have any gates up. And uh, we might run a few of them if we can work something out. That way, you know, the grass doesn't get ahead of us. And it helps them, helps us. And uh, we can uh, put more animals on the land and, you know, use our system of the mob grazing. Because the more animals that we have, well, the right amount of animals needed for the property that way the grass doesn't get too far ahead of us and then we also get a lot more nitrogen in the form of manure which will make the grass grow up better so we'll do that in our mob grazing format hopefully we can work something out to where it works out for both of us and i think it will, i think we will so this is the new fence here that uh was just built you can see it goes all the way that way like eight or nine hundred feet it's pretty far now, would I have gone with the, the five strand barbed wire? Uh, no, I probably would have gone with uh, either one, the timeless fence post, because that's a lot of fence posts needed here, or two, the um, woven wire deal, but that wasn't up to me. What can you do? We have a fence in place now, so that's, that's what matters. But now we can take a walk and see what we're working with. Um, this area here, yeah, it needs a little bit of work. We're not gonna, do the hay like this because uh you see what the the bare ground does you know it creates well it creates bare ground um just too much impact on one area but we'll get that all all squared away this might be one of the areas that needs a little bit of help and like i said we're doing joel Salton's system of deep bedding um across the way so when we make compost over there this might be one of the places that we spread it on to you know try and give it a little bit of help but you can see all the way around we go all the way around there not we don't have the chicken the old chicken house or that house that's the, where the property line ends but i think it's gonna be really funny because when we run our pasture chickens uh we're gonna do it right there in front of that old chicken house why is that it's my little thumb at the nose of the industry and say haha we're still in business that one not so much yeah i know sometimes i can be a little bit petty but you know it does prove a point that hey you look at the floor in there you can see it from far away yeah, nothing's growing in there. When we run our pasture chickens, this is just gonna go, this is just gonna explode. So this is uh, 17 and a half acres, it's, uh, or 17.75 acres, something like that. It's just under 18 acres, and the majority of it, like 90% of it, is pasture. And this is gonna be very good pasture. We've seen what grows up here. We've seen what grows across the way. You can see that's our place over there where it's super green. And we're gonna do the same thing here. So come springtime or late winter, probably late winter, um, right when spring's turning, um, I'm gonna be putting up a lane 
like I did across the way. That way we can do our, you know, mob grazing and our paddocks. And we might, don't hold me to this, but we might be doing a class on that, how we can do it. Super cheap, super effective, running water line. I mean, we're, we're doing it for, you know, a couple bucks an acre. I mean, it's, it's, really, it's really pretty cheap to do. And because that we're gonna do that, we're gonna make the land more productive, probably, probably twice as productive in the first year. I'd say probably twice as productive this first year. Um, so essentially we're buying 18 acres for, you know, 10 to 20 bucks. It's, it's pretty cool. So we might do a class on that. So if you're interested, be on the lookout for that. And I don't know exactly where it's gonna go yet. I have an idea, but we're gonna run a lane and then um, electric fence lines. And if you guys are interested in taking that class, just keep an eye out. We'll be announcing that soon if we decided to go forward with it, if I have the time. I think I think we will. I'm gonna try and make that priority because you know what? If we can help people learn, um, learn from our mistakes across the way, now I feel like I really do know what I'm doing. And uh, yeah, hopefully help people get either into this or make their, their, uh, their business better. So I told you that we're gonna do, uh, you know, of course our grass-fed beef, mob grazed. Told you that we're gonna do uh, chickens. We'll probably bring the ducks and geese over here too. We're gonna be doing probably turkeys. Uh, but this section over here, this has those pigs that I was talking about written all over it. See here, this is where we could do some uh, forest raised, pastured, whatever you wanna call it, pork. Pork raised the right way, the way that it's supposed to be. I see all these brambles and stuff. Um, I think the pigs will eat them. The pigs will eat them and then they'll root them up and then it'll create more of an area for the cows and then it'll also create more area for the pigs so this section here um you can see it's a pretty big it's like it's a couple acres i want to say i don't i haven't done the exact calculation yet but i think we could do some serious damage with some pigs in here so what i'll probably do is run a wire along the edge of this we'll call it the forest um right here all the way back to where it ends. That wire that I'd be running would be to keep the cows kind of out of here because if uh, the cows, you know, they have access to this, what they're gonna do is they're gonna go and lay under the trees during the daytime and they're gonna manure all around the trees and that's not really where we want the manure. Why is that? Because the trees, you know, a lot of these big trees here, they don't need it. They don't need the, the extra nitrogen. So what we're gonna do probably well for sure don't know when again a lot of big projects coming up um, we're gonna build a shade mobile like joel southen does he where he moves it around for his cows because out in the pasture as you can see it's very open there's really no trees out there and you have to give you know this is this is east texas this is texas and it's hot so you have to give the cows some sort of shade it'll make them a lot more comfortable it'll make them put on a lot more weight a lot quicker because they're comfortable and they're not stressed because of the heat so we're going to build a shade mobile that will be able to move around here so when we run this wire here we're going to keep the cows out of this forested area and then probably run a second wire underneath that way we can hopefully if we can do it properly train the pigs to one wire maybe two and um, then kind of do the whole rotational grazing of or rotational tilling, we'll call it that, rotational tilling, I don't think that's a thing, uh, of pigs in this section here. One of the, the, the issues that I saw with this was that it's on, it goes, there's a road over there, and then it goes kind of, it's kind of a steeper slope. And my buddy that does do already pastured pork, um, he said, I sent him a picture and I said, you know what, you might get a little bit of an erosion um, if you leave them there too long. So we're just going to kind of hit it and then move on and then uh, probably go back with some sort of uh, seed mix and create a little pig pasture, a pig silvo pasture here. We're going to leave a lot of the trees, a lot of these trees like, okay, like this, like that's doing nothing. That does nothing for the pigs, it does nothing for the cows, it does nothing for really anybody. So these will come out. If the pigs don't root them up, um, I'll come in here at the chainsaw and just, or even some loppers with these guys here, and they're gonna come out. And then we'll leave the big trees, uh, like this guy here. Like that guy will stay there. Um, maybe one of those there, we'll see. But we'll have the pigs come in here and clear this out. That way it doesn't get all like that and completely unproductive. See like there's cows grazing on this area right now and you can see there's grass that grows up 
you know, in there, in the brambles. But if you're a cow, you don't want to go in there. Why? Because you're going to get stuck. That's not fun. A pig, on the other hand, pretty sure. Like I said, I'm not an expert at all. Haven't owned a pig. i uh, fed a pig twice, three times, something like that. Uh, so don't, don't, this is not gospel at all. The pig, because their skin is so much thicker, they shouldn't have an issue with that. So this will be, this will be pretty cool. Hopefully we can add another animal to the farm. We can add something that's very productive, that helps everybody, because who doesn't like bacon? And um, turn this kind of junky pasture area into something, hopefully that looks similar to this little, see in between these trees right here? And civil pasture, hopefully we can get it looking like that. So come on, check out, we, uh, we have a pond here. I'll show it to you right now. And here it is, it's a pretty good sized pond. Don't know how deep it is. Um, I gotta get out there and see for myself um, and see how deep it is. It looks like it's pretty deep because the, the dam goes over there pretty good, but um, the water is pretty, uh, pretty kind of, you know, muddy, if you wanna call it that. So don't know if it's super, super deep. Because our pond, one of, you know, both of our ponds on the other farm, um, they're a lot darker color. I don't know if it's because this is more clay. I don't know. I'll figure it out. But uh, hopefully, because we're gonna we're gonna fence this off from the cows. The cows are not gonna get in here. We will probably use the water, um, or maybe for the pigs or something like that. Run a water line from here, do a siphon, because it's up maybe high enough. Um, but the cows aren't going to have access to this. This is kind of a emergency kind of only situation because we'll be running water lines out to them. So we'll see what this pond turns into. It will probably clear it up. If they're over, you know, if there's a paddock right here, we might, um, you know, like do possibly what Greg Judy does. Um, this is, I think this is the spillway. Do like a rock pad and uh, let them come and drink out of it. Um, but we'll see. Gonna yeah, kind of keeping our options open, but we might do that rock pad situation to where like if they're in this paddock um, They can drink out of here and then as we move them away Don't back fence they can come back and drink out of this pond But I do kind of want to get this tested because it's just a little bit. I don't know I don't like the the color of it. Oh and look at our friends here. I don't want to get too close You see them Right right there. That's uh, that's mr. Muscovy I think that's the neighbors are right down there that way so I think that's their duck that likes to come hang out of this pond he loves to sit right there on that spot all day long it's actually pretty cool I like Muscovy ducks because they're the only ones uh, they're, they're the only like domesticated duck from uh, South uh, South America all the other ones come from the mallard and uh, I think this come from Europe or something like that. But it's the only, it's it's a different type of duck. It's kind of a cross between a duck and a goose and it takes longer to hatch out um, their eggs. They actually make great mothers. Don't know too terribly much about them, but I think Muscovies are pretty cool. So that's my buddy. But you'll see why out here that I really do think this farm needs a shade mobile. Ours could use one on the other side, could use a shade mobile. But in every paddock I have uh, along the fence lines, we have some trees that have grown up to where they can get under in the summertime. And then in the lane, um, I'm planting fruit trees and uh, you know doing a permaculture orchard with some uh, thornless honey locust. And then uh, letting that hopefully grow up enough to where maybe in four or five, six years, they'll be able to use that as a, you know, a, a good amount of shade. That way they're not just going to the edges of the, um, the the paddocks and they can go kind of in the middle as well all right now here's what i'm really really excited for too and that's this building here i'll show it to you right now see in here this is a shop workshop okay previous owner he had uh using the big time um antique cars I think he had, uh, I don't know how many of them in here, but it was really nice. This is a very nice shop. A little bit old, but it's got, look, we got AC there. We got an old, <laughs> we actually got a really old heater over here. And check this out. They left the um, original style uh, GE fridge and it has some, you know, just got some leftover stuff that they left behind, but pretty cool. Now, why am I so excited about this? Let me show you why. 
Go like this. See that? That's the road. There's our house. There's our there's our house. There's our barn. There's our cows. There's the ducks. Our geese. The plan is right now is to turn this whole building into two things. The two things. We're gonna end up right about here. So these are kind of already framed out, but I'm gonna frame out a wall and a door here. And that side there, with this being open, is gonna be a farm store to where we can have, we'll probably take out the heater and all that stuff, put some freezers. We'll put some freezers that you'd see like in a grocery store, maybe a, um, you know, like a checkout little desk here. Then like maybe like a little checkout desk here or a cashier stand. Maybe we can partner with some local farms. We can sell honey, we can sell their vegetables and stuff because as you can hear, the highway is right there. It's right there. I think, I looked it up, I think there's like 7,000 people pass on that highway a day. Now I'm all, I'm not really for brick and mortar businesses. Um, not, it's not really my, my thing. I'm online, why? Because you can reach a lot more people. But when there's 7,000 people passing by every day and we have combined between both places, half a mile, maybe more, actually more than half a mile of road frontage, where we can put signs and stuff to attract them in. I think you have to take advantage of it. I think you have to take advantage of it. So I said that's what, you know, about half, we'll say maybe actually, maybe about a third of the shop is gonna be. It's gonna be a farm store. Really cool. Over here on this side here, um, it's gonna be a shop for a little while, like making some stuff. I'll show you guys some of that stuff inside. In here, I think we're gonna turn this into a commercial kitchen. Why? Because there's endless possibilities that come with that. Let me show you something. That barn across the street, we're turning into an event center. So in order to have, you know, in order to serve food and stuff, you need a commercial kitchen, which can be right there, be taken across the street to whatever party, whatever event is going on inside the barn. And then it opens up a lot more options too, to where, you know, if say we want to render the pig lard, if you need a commercial kitchen for that, it can be done here. If we want to do the tallow, need a commercial kitchen for that, also done here if we want to make any kind of uh, like skincare products so that's a big thing with the the pig lard believe it or not you know it's actually really I'm looking into that kind of heavy right now about how it, it works for especially for women's skin and stuff there's a whole thing to it but what if the commercial kitchen can produce that so as you can see we have a, a lot of big 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 plans Am I gonna be able to do this by myself? Absolutely not. Are we gonna to have to hire people? Yes, absolutely. Um, because to try and do all this, it's just not gonna work. Now that's gonna come slowly with time. There's so many different options um, with this new place. It just gives us so much potential and it just fits in so perfectly. And it's so nice to have, you know, family close by. It's really, I mean, literally right across the street. Now, not right across the street to where it's, you know, oh, I'm gonna be there and, what, five seconds. But our house, up on the hill over there, my dad's house, right around the corner, right, right there. It's like 650 feet. That's like 650 feet. In the city, where we come from, that's like two or three blocks away or something like that. Here, it's right across the street. And we have access to 18 more acres. I mean, whew. It's going to be a project and it's going to be a lot of fun and I hope that you guys come along on this journey with us because you know what, I think we're doing something, at least what I feel is pretty special. So let's go check out the house and I can show you what we've been working on for the past like two weeks. Alright, let's go take a look inside. And here's the inside, all nice and freshly painted. This took forever to do. And I'll go see where my dad's at. He's still working. Uh, working? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Getting this all done. Big, big difference. See, this is the kind of stuff that I'm building out of the old barn wood here. We're doing a, we're gonna do a TV stand. I'm gonna put a shelf on that actually. Uh, coffee table, end tables. Gonna build a breakfast nook out of it. And that's old, like rough cut barn wood and you just can't find that stuff anymore. It's like a hundred and something years old. It's really, really nice. So let's check it upstairs. It's so much brighter in here now. 
because it's a little bit dark. We still got uh we still got we got still got carpet to do, but all the rooms, like every room in the house, has been painted. And it's starting to come out really nicely. You have to do, I know we have to do a second coat over here. Because you can see it's not done all the way. And gotta finish up some of the trim. So we're still a couple days away from uh, the house being finished. Once the house is finished, uh, we gotta move in all the furniture. Might take a tiny, tiny, tiny little break because it's been a lot. That's why I haven't been making very many videos lately because you know what? It's a lot of work and when I get back to across the street, I'm tired. So I told my dad that he had the best view because when he looks out his living room window, guess what he sees? Me. <laughs> so like I said, that's just a little bit of what we got going on here. Um, it's gonna be, you know, years in the making to get this place up and going exactly how we want it. But if you want to see that happen, hit that subscribe button down below, ring the notification bell so you get notified when we put up new videos. Hit the like button because it really does help with the YouTube algorithm and drop a comment if you like, alright? Until next time, see ya. Bye. Oh, don't pity me Cause I'm not dressed in silk shirts And the fashion world, it seems, has passed me by I've got no roll of money stashed inside my pockets But I've got a million acres of rosy western sky I'm the richest, poorest cowboy down in Texas And I smile and count my blessings every day I've got white clouds overhead Sage grass for my bed And I can have my pick of any cactus on my way Oh, out here I'm king of all that I survey And I wouldn't have it any other way I don't need a deed or paper bill of sale Cause I'm king of this dusty cattle trail All the coyotes they stop by to sing their lullabies. Then I pray to God above for my dusty soul to keep. I'm the richest, poorest cowboy down in Texas. And I smile and count my blessings every day I've got white clouds overhead And sage grass for my bed And I can have my pick of any cactus on my way Oh, out here I'm king of all that I survey and I wouldn't have it any other way I don't need a deed or paper bill to sell Cause I'm king of this dusty cattle trail